So something you might be confused about is that if you look in a college course catalog or a high school course catalog, you might notice that there's two different physics courses for the same material. In other words, you might see an algebra-based mechanics course and also a calculus-based mechanics course. You might see an algebra-based electromagnetism course, and you might see also listed a calculus-based electromagnetism course. So you might be wondering, for one, which one should I take? And for two, why are we having two different classes on the same material? So that's what I want to talk about in this video because we're going to be adding more calculus-based physics videos to Khan Academy. So just as a heads up, you might be wondering, why are there two videos, for instance, on the same topic? I want to explain that in this video really quick. So the reason why there's two different physics courses and two different definitions of physics quantities is that, so let's say you defined the velocity this way, let's just focus on one of these. If you're in an algebra-based physics course, you're going to define the velocity to be the change in position over the change in time. So to help you visualize this, here's a graph, here's the position, x, and here's the time, t. And if you wanted to find the velocity given this graph, you could just find the slope because this delta x is really just the rise that way, divided by the run, which is delta t this way. And here's the key. If you've got graphs or functions, in other words, that are changing at a constant rate, in other words, if the slope of your graph that you're analyzing is constant, algebra is going to be just fine. This will be able to handle everything just fine. In other words, if we wanted to find the velocity of this object given by this graph, we could take the rise over the run, no problem. We find two points. Let's find two points that work well. This point's out one meter and two seconds. This point over here is at four meters and eight seconds. So the rise would be three meters and the run would be six seconds. And you'd get that the velocity of the object that this graph describes would be three meters over six seconds, which is gonna give half of a meter per second. And here's the key. Because the rate of change was constant throughout here, this was just a straight diagonal line, this is giving us the slope at any point in here. The slope in here is staying the same. So I could pick any two points that are convenient for me and find the slope between any two points, and that gives me the slope at every single point in here, which is great. And in an algebra-based class, it's kind of what you're going to rely on, is having functions that change at a constant rate. And if you've got functions like that, algebra is just fine. But what if you didn't have a function like that? What if, in other words, you had a function that looked like this? Something that was curved. Now this algebra definition isn't going to do so well. Let's say we wanted to find the slope of this green graph. We'd still have to pick two points. This point right here looks pretty good. It's at one half meter and three and a half seconds. And then I can pick this point right here, which is at two and a half meters and eight seconds. I can try to use my algebra definition of the rise over run. And I'd get that the slope is from a half to two and a half is two meters divided by three and a half to eight seconds is going to be four and a half seconds, which is going to give me about 0 0.44 meters per second. But here's the problem. What did I find? What slope did I find? The slope was changing in here. The slope started off about like that, and then it got a little steeper. And then it gets a little steeper still, and it keeps changing. The slope in here keeps getting steeper. So what did I find by doing delta x over delta t? Well, what I really found was the average slope between these two points. I just took an average. I averaged over all of these quantities, and I got some average slope. So if all you want is the average velocity, this will still be fine. This algebra definition will still be just fine. But let's say you didn't want the average slope. Let's say it's something, it was important. You needed to know the speed of an object at a given moment in time. So you wanted to know the slope exactly at five seconds. Well, this 0.44 isn't giving you the velocity at five seconds. It's giving you the average velocity between three and a half seconds and eight seconds. So what could you do to get the instantaneous velocity at five? What you do is you use a more sophisticated math. You use calculus. So calculus was built to handle functions where the slope is changing continuously. So Leibniz and Newton invented calculus, and Newton specifically invented it because he wanted to figure out stuff like this. What's the speed of an object at a given moment in time? And he knew that algebra was just going to give him an average value. He wanted a way to get an exact value. That's why there's a different course for the same topic in physics that uses calculus, because if you want to handle functions, the more general case where the function's slope is changing, then you're going to want to use a different definition of velocity. 
that's very similar, but this is the definition of velocity that you would see in a calculus-based physics class. Instead of delta x over t, it's this dx over dt, which you've, if you've never seen it, that's called a derivative. You might be like, what the heck is a derivative? Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. This is a way of finding the instantaneous rate of change of any function, be it a function that has constant change or a function whose slope, whose rate of change is also changing like this green curve. Calculus is like, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I'll find the slope of whatever you want. As long as you give me some function here, I'll take this derivative and that'll give you the velocity. So calculus classes are really, I should say calculus-based physics classes are really just a more general version of the algebra-based courses. The algebra-based courses are good. It's usually the first class you take in physics to get an idea of what all these quantities mean. And it can handle a wide variety of situations, mainly those where the rate of change is constant. And then once you learn that, you graduate on to the calculus-based course where you say, all right, let's handle functions of a general type where even the rate of change might be changing, i.e. there might be curviness in the graph. And if you want to do that, you define all these quantities using calculus instead of just algebra. And it's not just velocity that you do this for. Any function you've got in your algebra-based course, be it, let's say, power. So power is another one of these. Power was defined to be the change in energy over the change in time. You might say, no, it's actually the work over time, but work is just change in energy. So what do you do in calculus? If the rate of change of energy is constant, algebra handles it just fine. If the rate of change of your energy graph, if this was an energy graph and it was curving, you'd need a calculus definition. What would it be? You could probably figure out what it's going to be. You're just going to say that power instead of delta E over delta T is going to be the derivative of E with respect to T. And this would give you a way of finding the instantaneous rate of change of energy at any moment, even if the rate of change is also changing. In other words, even if there's curviness in that energy graph. And you go through. If you flip through one of these calculus books, you'll notice that all these definitions from algebra look just like the ones from calculus. It's just we use a derivative instead of deltas. There's a little more to it than that. Calculus allows you to do other things like find exact areas under curved graphs. But it's the same idea. Calculus allows you to handle curved graphs. Algebra allows you to handle graphs that are just constantly changing. So recapping, there's two different physics courses because some people don't know calculus yet. So we introduce the ideas in algebra, and that's just fine if you're considering cases where the rate of change is constant. And then once you learn the physics concepts here, we usually come down to calculus, and we take courses where the rate of change might actually be changing. That graph might be curved. You need a more sophisticated math to find the instantaneous rates of change, and there's a calculus developed specifically to do that, which once you know calculus, you can do that. So if you're going through these videos, the algebra-based ones are gonna be great if you know algebra and trigonometry. Calculus, you'd only wanna take if you knew calculus already. So to, to get good at the calculus-based videos, you should learn the calculus from the calculus progression in the math section. And you don't have to learn all of it. Really, the rudimentary parts of calculus are enough to get started here. So don't feel like you have to learn every single idea in calculus to watch the calculus-based physics videos. If you know how to take a derivative, that's a good place to start. A lot of times you can just learn how to apply it by watching how it's used in the physics videos. So if you're in a calculus-based physics course, I hope these videos we're gonna upload are gonna be useful. Or if you're just wanting to learn the beauty of physics using calculus, I hope you find these interesting and enlightening.